How to make a beat with GarageBand. Programming beats in GarageBand is simple and straightforward, and best of all, you can get started on almost any Mac. There is little that you need to purchase to get started. You can use a dedicated drum pad controller. You can also use any MIDI controller as well as many digital pianos. Some controllers feature both keys and pads. To start, launch GarageBand. Choose Empty Project. Software Instrument. The library panel on the left hosts a wide range of instruments that are free to use. These include authentic sounding drum kits, as well as drum machines and synthesized beats. I'm going to enable the keyboard view by selecting Window, Show Keyboard. As I play along on my digital piano, you can see the corresponding keys activating. If you don't have a MIDI controller or digital piano, or you're on the road with your laptop, you can use a computer keyboard to double as an instrument. To do this, select Window, Musical Typing. The alphabet keys now engage musical notes. Metronome and Tempo are controlled from the transport bar. When enabled, the metronome will click during recording as well as playback. I'm ready to record a few takes and patterns. I'm going to press record button and edit up the performance later. I'm going to scrub through my performance. I have a few false starts here, and I find it's much easier to keep recording when I make a mistake rather than to stop and start every single time. A tip for editing is to cut down the performance by determining good chunks on this single clip and isolate them into their own regions. To do this, press the comma and period keys to move back and forth one bar at a time with the playhead. Open up the precision editor, which is the scissors icon along the upper left. When good ranges of a performance are found, select Menu Bar, Edit, Split Regions at Playhead, or Command-T. I've got a few different sections for a verse and a chorus. I'll need to edit the timing, as well as the quality of this performance. First, the timing. In the Precision Editor panel along the bottom, individual drum hits are displayed. This grid represents at what interval a note was recorded. To edit an individual drum hit, click and drag the note on the graph. Add a note by holding the control key on the keyboard and clicking with the mouse. Quantizing is a way to automatically snap misaligned notes to the grid. To use this tool, click and drag to select a range of notes to time adjust. And use the Quantize panel in the Precision Editor by selecting a time interval such as 1 8 or 1 16 I'll be the first to admit that sometimes my performances drift so bad that even quantizing doesn't help, so understanding the manual tools is equally important. Velocity communicates how hard or soft a note was struck. To see this information, open up the automation panel in the upper left of the Precision Editor. Select a range of notes, and the overall velocity can be adjusted with a nonlinear weight. As you can see here, when I amplify a group of notes, they are not on the same curvature, which adds a nice nuance to a variety of hits. Note velocity can be adjusted on a per hit basis by clicking and adjusting the velocity graph.
New ranges of velocity can be drawn by holding the control key and dragging a region to create a crescendo effect. It's a good idea to not max out velocity. For instance, if a snare hit is meant to be loud, try aiming for 90% volume rather than 100%. It's good to leave a little bit of overhead in the performances to not induce ear fatigue on the listener, unless of course that's your intent. Since we've been working with virtual instruments this whole time, we can change from a drum kit to an electronic kit. Open up the library panel on the left and try out different instrument presets. This is a great way to mix up your sounds. And since we're working with MIDI data, the tempo can be changed after the fact. For instance, I can move up from 120 BPM into the 130s for more of a dance pace. And that's getting started with making a beat in GarageBand. 